All right, everyone, welcome back to the Get It Done podcast. I'm Joe Zanke, your host, co-founder, COO of On Demand Storage. And today I'm with my guest, Stephen Wallace of the National Financial Network. Steve, what's going on, man? Hey, Joe, thanks for having me, man. I'm doing well. How was your weekend? It was good. It was good. I had a good weekend. Spent a lot of time with family. Uh, how about yourself? Same. It's the same exact idea. It was a busy weekend and full of family. It was a good weekend for it. Definitely. Well, good, man. I'm, I'm happy to have you on. I'm, uh, I, w- I want to learn a little bit more about... Um, you know, National Financial Network, but first, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into this career, and, um, and you know, maybe a little bit about your path, and then we can get into what you do today. Yeah, sounds good. So, um, I haven't answered this question in a long time, but it's been about 10 years, and I, I sort of just eased into the industry. I was in between, um, I was an education major in college. I was an education major with a, with a focus on uh, English and writing. And I thought I was going to be a journalist. I just knew I wanted to educate people. And uh, I was attending bar through college just to pay bills. And uh, this guy used to come in and he would just chat me up. He used to bring a whole bunch of friends. And, and I'm like, do you ever work? <laughs> what, do, do you ever do anything? And um, he said, yeah, like my, my job is to talk to people. And I didn't, I didn't quite understand. So one day I actually spent some time with him outside of the bar and and outside of that context. And he told me that he worked for MetLife. He was a financial advisor there. And he really just encouraged me to get into the industry. He wanted me to work on his team. And through an odd series of events, I I did not ever end up working with him. Uh, He and I remain good friends to this day, but just things changed. I never ended up working with him. I went to school for business and marketing at Eastern Nazarene College, which really just brought out the entrepreneur in me. Uh, I took to it like water being wet. And um, I sort of went on my own path. And, and I'm very independent in that way. And what ended up happening was, is I ended up uh, at National Financial Network after a couple of years of bouncing around between, you know, trying to find the right fit at the right insurance company or the right financial planning company. And um, I sort of found my, my sweet spot at National Financial Network, who houses my practice. And basically what I do is I take the, the ideas and ideals that I had in college of being an educator. And now I, I educate clients. I'm, I'm, very, um, I'm very educational and consultative, not this is what you need to have every single time. I'm not cookie right. cutter. Right. And uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's the path that I chose. I, I work almost exclusively with business owners because um, of that entrepreneur in me. I know what business owners need and, and like. And moreover, I am a business owner. I, I know the, the trials and tribulations of opening a business and trying to run it. My wife is a business owner. And, um, so for that reason, I, I, my practice focused almost exclusively on showing business owners a roadmap to protection decisions using their business as an asset, not just as something they work in. Definitely. I like that. I like that mentality. I think that's really important. It gives you such an edge um, when you're you know, out there talking with clients, meeting with people and that you can relate directly to them um, as a business owner. You know, my, I, one of my partners and I, um, you know, kind of run a, a little side business that we do um, SEO marketing for. Sure. And, you know, the only reason why we ever started it was because we developed these techniques and, and worked with a team that really helped uh, and, and, and grew our business extremely quickly by using, you know, having good SEO. And then, you know, we decided to, help a couple other people on our network. Long story short, the only reason why I bring it up is because we approach it from a business owner standpoint. So we, you know, we're not just some marketing agency and some people who, you know, just graduated school, know a little bit more about marketing than maybe you and I do. And right. you try to run, you know, your company's, you know, whole campaign. We, we're approaching it from exactly how, you know, we approach it as business owners ourselves with on-demand storage. And so with your business, you know, it goes such a long way being able to talk to people because you're running your own business, your family's running their own business, you know exactly what it's like, you know, you know, there are times when maybe you need a little bit more cash in the bank than, you know, that then you would want to spend on investments, or maybe there's times where you flush your cash and you invest it in something, whatever it may right. be, you know, you can come from that background, you can relate to those people. And that's probably why they um, enjoy working with you in, in, in that. I hope so. You know, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I rely on that feedback from from clients all the time and i do push for it quite frequently but you but you get it as a, as a multiple business owner you know uh, short on time very very short on time needing people by your side who aren't going to manipulate you and abuse your time and who are going to provide value like the second they meet you 
you know, that that's the life. Yeah. That is, that is what you got to do. And you got to be, um, and that's what, that's what a lot of business owners are looking for is that, that kind of not instant gratification, but instant value add where, you know, this, I trust this person and they're going to take these worries and these needs off my plate. They're going to solve this problem for me without me needing to hold their hand the whole time. Uh, that's a right. Big, right. That's a big piece of it too, because they don't really, you know, often we don't have time to, to hold the hands. You know, we need people who can come in and, and get things done immediately. Yeah, absolutely. So, agree completely. you know, when you're, when you're dealing with these clients, do you have any, um, general business principles that you like to follow, you know, now that you've been doing it for a little while, uh, you know, how do you, how do you go about, you know, your business on a day-to-day week-to-week basis with when it comes to talking with and, 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 you know, interacting with your clients? Yeah. I mean, this is a huge question because I can get all philosophical about, you know, business philosophy, sales philosophy. So I'll try to keep it simple because I know we don't have a ton of time, but um, I think the first I already mentioned is, is add value right away. So, um, uh, talking specifically about, you know, LinkedIn and, and there's, there's so many people on LinkedIn and a lot of conversations start on LinkedIn. Ours did. Right. Sure. Um, yep. So I think in that context is when you meet with somebody, you got to leave the sales pitches aside and you got to get to know who the person is just a little bit. Um, because I don't want to work with people who I don't enjoy working with or who I don't enjoy talking with. You know, I, I think that's, that, that forces you into a precarious situation. I think it forces the client into a precarious situation. So I think you should work with people, you know, like, and trust, and that takes some time and that's okay. Yep. Um, so I think having conviction in the process, and I think also right up front provides some value. So I'm almost always trying to make an introduction to an investor or to someone who I think will add value, or even if it's not me, I don't care if every, everything is, how can I help? How can I help? I, I drill it at home. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think, I think lastly is just relying on an, about a decade of experience, knowing that not every business owner or, or not every business is going to be cookie cutter. Nothing's cookie cutter and, and being able to take a step back and analyze a big picture and say, okay, Joe works in this business. He's definitely not a good fit for this insurance company. For example, mm-hmm. I know he might want this company, but we should work with this one over here because that's more of a straight line or simple given his time. And, and, it, it's sort of hard to explain, but you really have to, to put a, a, a path of least resistance for business owners. I, that's the, the path I take. Yeah. So I think providing value, uh, plug and play <laughs> type solutions with a, with a, with a bit of personalization and, and why it works, a little bit of handholding, um, yeah, I think it's probably the shortest version I can give you. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. Well, you know, going back to, just being able to add value, you know, I, I, I work with, um, you know, just for example, not to mention any names or anything like that, but like when it comes to working with a marketing agency or something like that, um, I go back to that because we work with plenty of others. And, and again, you know, going into a relationship, expecting immediate results and some, some type of service, whether it's financial services or a marketing agency, whatever it may be, is not the right way to approach it. But at the end of the day, you know, are, is this person going to come in and, and, and solve my problems? Are, you know, they going to be taking this thing off my plate? Um, and there are some that I've worked with that have been like, it's been so, so easy. Like you said, cookie cutter, you just, here's the information. They could take it. They run with it. They solve the problems you need them to solve. And they present you the info and you're just like, wow, that was, that was fantastic. That's exactly what I paid for. Um, yeah. There are others where, you know, they want to have a, call every three days about, you know, what, what they're seeing and what's going on. And, Hey, I need more information with this. Hey, can I give you a little bit of advice here? Can I do this, that, and the other thing? It's like that, that isn't what I need. You know what I mean? That I, I'm half the reason why I'm investing in this is because I need it one, but because I am looking at this as a situation where it would be better off in someone else's hands because yeah. I have maybe too much other things going on that I, that need my attention more. And, you know, I trust you that you're going to go get it done. And, it's just important. You know, it's just important that once you realize as a business owner, you can't do everything yourself, the people you bring in to do the tasks that you need, like, um, to, to get off your plate, it's, it's a huge piece of that is adding value immediately. I, I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know what, there's a time and place for everything. You know what I mean? Some services are going to need that call every two or three days, especially in the beginning. But I think overall, and I'm, I, I'm careful about generalizing, but overall, I think those times are dead. 
I think you can, I think you can accomplish a lot in a short period of time with quick virtual consults and quick phone calls and just like get the process rolling. I, you know, Joe, like the last thing that you probably want to do is, is spend an exorbitant amount of time improving your business when someone could just do it for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's true. It's true. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Now, I know you mentioned that you, um, you know, a friend of yours kind of guided you into this business and you didn't work together. Do you have um, maybe some other mentors or role models that have helped you out since then and, um, and that you could point to? You know, you don't have to mention names or anything like that, but has that played an important role in your journey? Yeah, absolutely. So this is this is a general answer. And I, and I won't share, uh, I think, specific names at this point, but more of a concept. And I think I think what I'm about to share here might transcend into into a bigger conversation for another time but mm -hmm. is uh i think when i started i i would have met with just about anybody and i worked alone right and it, it, i had a team behind me i had people who could help when i asked for it, but i didn't ask for it and i learned the hard way joe it was it was insane you know i fell on my face and i believe in fail forward so failing is is not a problem in my mind but um, i fell on my face a lot and i i barely made a living and in, in this industry, it, you're the majority of us over here are 100% commission. I don't think I don't think that um, compensation is and talked about enough in my line of work. Sure. Um, sure. But what I what I started to do uh, several years in is do a lot of joint work with other advisors on every case, on every single client, or as many as possible, anyway. And the results were phenomenal. I mean, more value to the client, faster work. Uh, delegation of responsibilities and duties. And what that ended up doing is in the beginning, like I said, I'd started work, I'd work with just about anybody, but as I got faster and better and my advice became more efficient and my processes became more refined and so on and so forth, I found that my sweet spot was actually executive decision makers like business owners. And not for that specific reason, I, there's a similarity. You know what I mean? I, I already have that. We discussed that already. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I credit a lot of my growth to working with other people, even outside my industry, all the time. Yep. All the time. Consultants, um, tax specialists, CPAs. I, I credit joint work to my own personal growth. And now what's ended up happening, Joe, is now I have just enough information to be dangerous in multiple parts of my of my industry that I'm that that I don't specialize in. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you were a client or a prospective client, or if you just said, "Yeah, I'm interested in this info," I I send you like a once a month email that says, "Hey, Joe, my CPA sent me this. You might want to check it out if you have any employees. It's a tax credit." You know what I mean? It just goes back to that value add. Definitely, definitely. I think that's super important. I, you know, half the reason why I, I do this podcast still is because I learned from all, you know, the different people, business owners that I talk to and in all these different industries, um, they can just add so much value. You know, you can learn so much from just communicating with other people, doing business with other people, see how they approach their work. Um, and you can kind of use everybody as like, you know, their own, a mentor in a way, you know what I mean? Maybe not be like the, the perfect word for it, but if you're interacting with people who run their own show and, and do their, do their own stuff, I think it's important to pay attention. Um, I think it's important because you can learn a lot about what to do and uh, you can pay attention uh, sometimes and, and learn about, you know, Hey, what not to do. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I want to handle that situation a little better than they handled it. Um, but regardless, you know, if you're constantly curious and paying attention and, and, working with others, networking with others while you're doing those things. Um, you know, there's no telling how much you can learn from, from other people. Right. And, and oftentimes you can avoid making mistakes because you're, you know, smart enough to ask the simple questions, you know, at the beginning and not, not rely on, you know, your gut instinct or rely on a, you know, what someone's telling you that maybe you've never done something before. Just ask somebody who has, because they'll tell you, it'll, yeah you know, what not to do. They might not know exactly what, how, how to do it, but they'll tell you, you know, a mistake that they made before. I think that's yeah. the whole thing too, is just be willing to get out there, talk to people, be personable. You can learn so much. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I'll find out. That, yeah. That, that, yeah. that answer should be prevalent like everywhere. Oh, definitely. Definitely. That, yeah. that, that answer should be, should be the answer to almost any question when, especially when a client yeah. talks to you, you know what I mean? They, mm -hmm. I don't know, but I'll find out for you. You can, it's perfectly okay to admit that you don't know something. Um, and people would yeah. appreciate it a lot more than you trying to be a know-it-all and, and tell them the exact answer on that, on that point in time. Like, hey, let me get back to you on that. I want to make sure I'm, 
I'm telling you the correct information. You know, that's a, you just did someone a favor. You didn't lie to them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can make a career out of being a professional follow-upper. <laughs> yeah, you could. You know what I mean? I don't know, but I'll find out and I'll follow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, Steve, are you seeing technology, you know, obviously it's so relevant right now. The world's moving incredibly fast, you know, 2021. Yeah. I mean, different social medias, different platforms, different um, different software systems. Where are you seeing technology kind of play a role in um, in your industry? Sure. So, I mean, the obvious is what we're doing right now. Zoom meetings. Right. right. That's, true. Um, that's the obvious stuff. Uh, I used to drive an hour to my office do a full work day there. And I, sometimes longer work day. Cause when you first start in this industry, as any business owner, when you first start, you're not doing an eight hour day, you're doing a 12, 16 hour day sometimes, mm -hmm. but then an hour back and then, you know, go to the gym, fall asleep. It felt like that was my whole day. And now it's like, I roll out of bed <laughs> and I get to work. So my commute is 15 inches to my floor, <laughs> you know? So, so that, that has changed quite a bit. Um, and I can, I can stack appointments. And so the virtual meetings thing is, is, been an absolute game changer. Mm -hmm. um, but where I, I think where I see, um, you know, technology changing things is in relation to it, but not specifically that. It's like now everybody, you're seeing offices close down. You're seeing office spaces reduce in size. Their footprint is getting smaller. It's because the employers and, and the, the companies are endorsing work from home from now on, if you want. Right. So they have a smaller footprint. And what that's causing is almost everybody to go remote and go virtual to sell online, to explore SEO and digital marketing and all these different things. And what and this is a bit of a theory. It's, I think time will tell, Joe, but I think what's going to end up happening is that so many people are going that way to simplify and digitize their marketing process that I think what actually is going to come back is the personal touch. I think it's going to come back. Yeah. So I think the days of cold calling, which were, you know, years ago, those might come back or a different iteration of it, a different derivative of it. Sure. Um, because people are going to be so inundated with the digital outreach that they're just begging for the personal touch. I, yeah, I definitely think that's going to, that's going to start happening. I mean, you see it even just not being around, um, you know, if you're used to being around colleagues and, um, you know, people that you work with and, and now you're working from home solo all the time, you know, that yeah. that's full on people, people are, um, you know, they're, they're personal creatures. I think that that um, is a good point. I think that um, I think you're spot on. I think that if we kind of stay ahead of that curve and, and continue to, you know, put that personal touch. Um, that's the challenge first, you know, when it does come back around, um, you know, you'll be, you'll be out in front of it. Um, another thing too, I think that's, that's cool with, with your industry you know, and I've, I've actually talked to another uh, a friend of mine um, who does something similar. And when it comes to the Zoom meetings, you know, you're not now you're not limited to who you can work with. I mean, typically, as a financial advisor, you know, it's it's um, there's some geographic challenges that people are used to meeting in in person. You know, what I mean, how many you can't really work with someone who lives in New York. Uh, you can't work with someone who lives in California or somewhere else. Not um, not, not very easily, you know what I mean? But, or I guess you could work with them, but they might be like, well, I, I'd rather choose to maybe work with the person up the street, you know, um, cause I can, you know, that of that personal touch, but now with this zoom world, people are used to it, you know, so they're just going to work with whoever they, they want to and like the most and whoever can add the most value. And so yeah. that's an advantage for guys like you, you know, who, who put that type of stuff first who like to educate people, you know, someone, people are now much more used to meeting someone in a setting like this um, and feeling, you know, trusting them. And then, yeah, they're open to it. and then you can, you know, provide your services to someone and maybe never meet them in person. And, and right. I think that like, if that's something you're interested in doing um, is a, a great thing for your industry, because like I said, just kind of, you don't have to, drive to the office and then maybe you have three appointments that day and you have, you spend six hours of the day in your car um, trying to get to each one. You know, you could use something like this simply because people are now way, way more used to using it and save yourself a lot of time, um, but also open up, you know, the, the uh, potential book of business as well. Right. So it's, it's, it's interesting that you say that because 2020, 
the pandemic forced us, almost everybody to go virtual and go remote. But I was uniquely set up for it because uh, my market's in all 50 states anyway. Nope. So I've been doing business in all 50 states at some point or another for, uh, for a few years now, but I had not exclusively dedicated myself to virtual meetings. And 2020 hit and I was uniquely positioned to do better than I thought I was going to. And I did. And I have to be careful and tactful. And I don't mean, I mean no disrespect to anybody who's struggling out there because there are a lot of people struggling out there as a result of this pandemic. But um, I was sort of in a position where I was able to, to do better than I expected. And it's because I was already doing business in other states. And Zoom changed that. Zoom amplified my practice quite a bit because it used to be just a simple screen share. And now it's face-to-face -face Zoom. Yep. Um, so it, it really... It was transformative. It was incredible. And now my business plan includes building small remote like satellite offices for representation in, in all 50 states. Yep. Um, so I mean it's a long-term plan, but it's it's amazing how much technology has changed things. That is, I mean, that, and good for you. Good for you for being um being able to take advantage of that. And that's great. And now, you know, like you said, you're kind of adding different things to the business plan because of the way you were uniquely positioned and, and what you can take advantage of doing, you know, something like a Zoom meeting, um, being able to educate the same way you would be, you know, beforehand, but honestly, even more so, you know, um, mm. that's fantastic. That's now, tough. entrepreneurship obviously isn't all... Um, you know, these, it's, it's not always the greatest thing in the world. You know, I think for us, it sounds like, you know, now that we're doing it, we're in practice, I don't think we trade it for the world, but um, talk to me about a time that was tough, you know, talk to me, whether it was getting started or when, you know, you, uh, and, th and then maybe touch upon how you got out of it as well. Yeah. Um, this is, this is like my favorite question, Joe, because, because it, it, it hits home. And I think anybody who's running a business and is starting a business is an entrepreneur and, and helping other people run their business, this should hit home. Um, the struggle for me has happened several times because I mentioned in the early years, I, I bounced from a couple of different insurance companies and every single time you leave and, and go to another one, you start fresh. Um, I don't know about a lot of the other producers out there, but I'm not in the habit of violating non-competes. So I, I just started from scratch and that is hard. That means like you, you lose your renewals, you lose your clientele, you lose everything. <laughs> and you start from scratch. Yeah. And so I worked multiple jobs. I worked on weekends. I worked 65 hours a week. I work, well, I don't know if that's the actual number, but it was a lot, right? <laughs> I'm working 12, 14 hour days. Sure. Um, I had more than enough to drink. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, like I, I, I struggled through it. And, um, you know, I, in the spirit of transparency, because like, we all need to be real with each other. I think the the sort of like unprofessional, unperfect display that the world has had is uh, on LinkedIn, especially has had its day. So I'm going to, I'm going to buck that trend and say, you know, I lost my health insurance. I lost benefits. Um, it was a true, true struggle. Like I, I literally know what it's like to not have any money, you know, mm -hmm. and to sort of bootstrap my business up from nothing. And that's where, that's where I think I excel at, at where I know what it's like to be a business owner, because I literally went door knocking, you know, residential and commercial door knocking to build my practice back up. I make cold calls. I'm not bashful about making cold calls because I believe that people need my product and my services and they, they should at least hear a 20 second explanation on why, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to hurt anybody. And that's, that's sort of the, the answer to your question is how did I pull myself out of it is with just grinding, grinding hard work, you know? And I think that's what everybody has to embrace. They do. They sure do. And I appreciate your honesty and I appreciate you um, getting into that with us because, you know, I think it's so important. I think you mentioned a really great thing. Um, you know, you go on LinkedIn, you see all these people just posting success stories. It's just success stories. No one wants to talk about the tough times, you know, no one wants to talk about what it's truly like um, to be out here, um, you know, trying to earn a living on your own. Um, everyone is willing to talk about, you know, oh, hey, look at us, we're doing this, or we're doing this, or we got this great, you know, new client, we got, you know, we just got funded, we got whatever it may be, um, which is all good things. And, and, and people right. should share it's fantastic. Them. 
but there's not a lot of places to go share the the tough times, the times that you just described, which are incredibly hard. Um, and I've been through those times too. You know, I, I it's, and, and it's kind of a lonely journey, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, it can be a very lonely journey, even if you have business partners, you know, you're going through it together. It's still one of those things where yeah. you feel like you're on an island sometimes. Um, and leadership is a lonely journey. Yeah. Especially yeah. when you're running your own business and you're, you're the leadership of one. <laughs> right. Right. You know, definitely. Um, so again, I appreciate you, you going into those past because, and a then, pleasure. and then being, you know, willing to, like you said, just the way you get out of it is just to grind through. I mean, it's endurance. It's an endurance game. You know, it's a, it's, it's easy to get started. Um, and you had to get started from scratch, which is not easy, like you said, over and over again, but it's easy to, it's, it's easy to just say, Oh, I'm going to try this. You know what I mean? Um, it's a lot easier to quit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The people that have success, the people that, um, you know, I'm fortunate enough to talk to all the time are people who, play the endurance game and they just they just you know look the idea of quitting right in the face and they say i'm not going to do it and yeah no way grinding through they keep grinding through they keep grinding through and then you know you do get back to a point where i think you know you and i would agree that you wouldn't trade being kind of your own boss for the world um right. but there are times where you're just you're looking around like why am i doing this to myself <laughs> <laughs> and i've been there too i like i even like I, I, I uh, left my current contract. Well, not my current contract, but I left a former contract very similar to what, to what I'm in now to go just be a W2 employee. And I, I became a consultant in what I do now and just like service clients on an ad hoc basis. I don't know if that's the correct phrase, but you know, time every now and again. And I took a W2 job because I had that same mentality. And I, you know what happened after like three months? <laughs> I'm like, I can't do this. I'm going back. I can't. Like, yeah. I Oh yeah. I'm, I'm not wired for it. No, no. I, I think that's a unique quality with uh, a lot of us too. And I think that if you're, if you're someone who's a business owner, you want to be, um, if you feel that bug, if you feel like you're being kind of suppressed, like when you're in your own job, I think, you know, it, you know what I mean? And, and, um, and I'm, that's like the, what you're talking about with the wiring, you know, I, I always had that feeling when I was working for somebody else, I was like, I have so much more to offer than I'm able to give this, this, current employer of mine. Yep. Um, and it's simply because I just can't do it in this setting. Like I just, it's, yeah. it's not going to work. And, yeah. uh, and I actually, you know, fortunately haven't had to go back since I started. Um, but I know I would feel the exact same way. I'd be like, wait, 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 no, no, no. I, I, <laughs> I'll go do anything. You know what I mean? That rather than, than go back to there. So it's um, that's the gut check. You know what I mean? For me, that was the gut check. Cause I always felt this way. I always felt like I need to drive my own, drive my own business and drive my own life. Right. And, and not let, not help someone else accomplish their mission statement, help myself accomplish my own. Right. But that short time away was my gut check. I'm like, Oh yeah, no, I wasn't wrong. I, I have to start doubting my doubts. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. And that not everybody needs it. I did. And that's all. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Well, look, man, I really appreciate you coming on here and sharing your story. I mean, this has been awesome. Um, it's very, for very me, insightful. Um, my last question that I typically ask all my guests, do you have a, maybe a book recommendation or um, it could even be a podcast recommendation for the audience? Maybe something that uh, you've read at any point in time in your life that uh, last left a, a lasting impression? Yes, absolutely. Um, books. Um, I, I highly encourage everybody listening to, to read voraciously. And I, I have several, if that's okay. Um, do a couple, do a couple, <laughs> do a couple. Okay. So first is who moved my cheese. It'll take you 90 minutes to read. Yep. It's written. It's an adult book written at the level of like a fourth grader. So it's a simple concept designed to get you to embrace change. It's, it's moving. Um, the second is the big book of small business. It's designed. It's, it's a, book this thick but it's meant to get you to think about best practices in running your business um i would say the the last is never split the difference by chris voss yes that one's great yeah so you gotta read go. the other two with the uh chris voss he's he's a savage he's awesome yeah he's a savage <laughs> yep yep you're right you're right and you think uh you know, we think we have problems or, or we, you know, some of these decisions in front of us sometimes are, are tough. And then you look at what that guy used to do and it's like, Oh, okay. mm -hmm. no one, uh, there wasn't multiple people's lives on the line. 
lives on the line exactly he's like i can handle my job <laughs> yeah 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 i can i think i can i can get through this this one little decision maybe about like payroll or something that <laughs> <laughs> it puts things in perspective <laughs> it, it certainly does it certainly does um all great books i want to check out the other two too because i haven't read those so i uh i'm looking to build out a nice little library for myself um nice so i appreciate it um Look, man, my pleasure. Thanks a lot for coming on here. This has been great. It's been great getting to know you. And um, I hope to continue the conversation, you know, after this. Likewise. And uh, likewise. Thanks for having me, Joe. Recurring guest type of aspect, you know, as we move forward. That works. Awesome, man. Take it ahead. The more we dive into business philosophy, the more I have to add. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we can keep talking. I mean, we could do this for three hours, like Joe Rogan style, but uh, I don't want to take up too much of anybody's day. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Take care.